Hello, Syngap families. My name is Mike Gralia. I am the Managing Director of Syngap Research Fund, and this is episode two of Syngap 10, a 10-minute update for you about everything that the Syngap Research Fund, SRF, is doing. Notice I am drinking from my cool Eat Sleep Cure Syngap One mug. If you don't have one, you can by going to our store. All right, let's jump in. What's going on right now? That's great news. What should you smile about? Number one, Sprint for Syngap, our fundraiser. Sprint dot, I mean, syngap.fund slash sprint. Uh, sprint for Syngap is on. We have raised $33,000. It's pretty amazing. The event ends in a month. So in a month, we're going to do our 5K. But you can raise money right now at Sprint for Syngap. And I want to thank uh, the top five teams, which is Team Carter, Team Michael, Team MMA, Team Elsie, and Team Chase. And then if I look at the top individuals, Team Sadie and Team Grayson are on there. These folks have coming in all over a thousand bucks, Some in some cases well over a thousand bucks, and we are so grateful to them for their support and their help raising money to fund Syngap Research, so good job. Um, we also worked a lot on webinars this week. There's gonna be five or six webinars coming soon that you should sign up for, that'll be in next week's newsletter. But one I really wanna point out is on Thursday, it's me and Joe talking about what it means to have a Syngapian diagnosed as a teenager, right? So you've gone through life from zero to 13, 14, 15, whatever thinking my kid has epilepsy and autism, but no one's sure why. And then suddenly you find out why. And, and does that change anything? Does that matter? What does that mean to you? Well, that's exactly what Joe Ashline lived through. And she and I will talk about this on Thursday. So if you want to join that conversation, syngap.fun slash teen DX, D letter D letter X for diagnosis. Um, so please, please join us. And there'll be a lot of other amazing webinars that will be in next week's newsletter. Third things uh, that you could do right now, you should know about Citizen. If you're a parent and you haven't signed up for Citizen, please sign up for Citizen. Not only will this give incredible data to researchers, but there are companies we are in discussion with who are gonna build clinical trials on the Syngap Citizen platform. So by signing up, you increase the chances your child is included in those trials. If you're not on the Citizen platform and someone built a trial on the Citizen platform, the chance of your child being included in those trials is really low, um, like zero. So 100%, a uh, hundred families so far in the U.S. have signed up. If you're not one of them, citizen, C-I-I-T-I-Z-E-N, two I's, dot com slash Syngap1. Sign up, please. All right, so what did SRF do for you this week? You got to know that because we keep telling you to support SRF, to like SRF, to follow SRF. What what are we doing? Why, why should you do any of that? Well, we spent a lot of time talking to... Um, Companies, there were a couple companies who were trying to learn more and think about building their, their platform uh, to include Syngap1. Remember, these companies don't wake up thinking about a gene. They, they wake up thinking about some kind of technology, and then they say, what genes will that technology work on? And it's a pretty big list. In our case, it's a neurohaploid sufficiency. That's it's a pretty, pretty big list. But then which one should we work on? They can only pick three, four, five. And that's an important conversation where you want someone who knows what they're talking about talking to them. So my, my big thanks to some of our board members and, and volunteers who joined me in those conversations this week as we said to people, work on Syngap1, it'll be okay. Um, we also worked on a mouse. Those companies need um, humanized mouse and that's something we're trying to fund so that everybody can just have one and not argue about it. Because this is the trouble, right? Companies and universities all make stuff and then you want the other company or university to have it so they can work too and they're like, oh no, we don't share. That's not gonna work. Uh, some of these people are really bad at sharing stuff and there are important things like a humanized mouse that maybe SRF should just pay for so everybody can have it fast. Another important thing SRF should just pay for so everybody can have it is cell lines, right? So we take our patient's blood or skin and we, we use some science to turn that back into a stem cell. Stem cell can grow into anything and then we turn the stem cell into a neuron because that's where Syngap is, right, in our neurons. and. There are iPSCs, there are cell lines out there uh, with Syngap mutations. But the trouble is they're at University B or University S or whatever. And those universities, sort of phenotypically, are just really bad at sharing stuff, right? So you introduce them to a company and they're like, oh, we don't share with companies, company's bad. We need money for that. And it just, the conversation dies. And it's like, no, you just need to share the cell line so the company can test the technology and then the, com then the party starts, right? The party hasn't even started yet. Let's get the party started. And so, what we've been thinking about more and more and realizing by studying the bigger and better organized genes like CDKL5, SN1A, etc., is that these really well organized uh, rare disease monogenic groups have iPSC biobanks, places where patients have put their, their, their blood or skin. Uh, the organization has paid a researcher or a CRO, someone to make these cell lines. They've done isogenic controls. If you don't know what it is, look it up. And 
and they're available right now for re any researcher who needs them. That's what we need to do. And, and so that's something else in Gap Research Fund is we're, we're talking to those people and trying to figure out how they did it and looking for the best models so we can do the same thing. Because we need more and more companies to pay attention to our drug, right? A researcher in a lab is not going to build a drug that cures our kids. A researcher in the lab might inform that. But a researcher who leaves the lab, joins a company, starts a company, raises a ton of money, invests the time and the expertise to, to get a drug through trial, that's how our kids are going to get treated, which is why um, we are so excited to be talking to companies because they're in that process right now. The other thing we're doing, speaking of cell lines, we're talking to a company that wants to build their own cell lines because we don't have any. And uh, they're going through our list of variants from Citizen. So you, if you're in Citizen, you might be getting a call saying, hey, please go and share your genetic material so this company can build cell lines. And when you get that call, please say yes so that company can um, get to know you, get to know your kid's genetic mutation and see if their tech works on it. I mean, it's, it's, it's a call that millions, I'm not rounding up, millions of rare disease families across America would love to get. Um, E4 sensors. We bought some sensors this week. Google them. They're really cool. Uh, they look like watches, but there's no face, and they gather data. And we bought some of those for one of our researchers and said, hey, please just go figure out if there's something in here that works on Syngap. And it was a small, it was like four or five. And, and when this researcher does that and gets that data, they might call us back and be like, yeah, you know, there's something we can measure here. And the reason that matters is because when one of those companies I just talked about has a clinical trial, they need something to measure. See episode one, I talked about that. And so these E4 sensors could be a way for us to gather that data. From what we, from our research, they're one of the best sensors out there. So we bought some. Here's hoping. Send it to the smartest person we knew. The other thing we did this week is we worked on, uh, we didn't work on, we had a family support group. So every Wednesday at 5 p.m. specific, we have family support groups. These are super, super cool. We get together, we share our, we share our stories. We just Some people just listen, some people talk. Everybody gets to say hi. And these have really become an important part of keeping our sanity and, and staying, um, staying above water in the, in the past year. But we're going to keep them going because they really go well. And we were, so we were really touched when the Child Neurology Foundation wrote a blog article about our support groups. And um, if you follow us on social, we, we plastered that everywhere. It's just a good read. And if you're a family and you haven't come to one of our groups, please check it out. Everyone's welcome. It's good people. We just talk and, and, and help each other through this crazy life of raising a Singapian. All right. I got two and a half minutes left. I got to start talking faster. Worms. I talked about worms last week. Getting the next board together. We have a couple families stepping off the board. We have a few families stepping on the board. Every year the board changes a bit. Really excited about this. Uh, Syngap Research Fund is led by a board of families. There are no paid consultants or people who don't have Syngapians on our board. That would be weird and confusing. We have 12 families on our board, and, and you can call any of them and be like, what is SRF really doing? I would, uh, really? Are they just working on all this stuff for free? Yes, we are. But call any board member because it's all right there. We need an institution like SRF to advocate for our kids through the course of their lives, and we're all too old and tired to deal with it. We need to keep getting young families in and growing SRF and growing the board so that there's an institution that cares for our kids because our kids are going to be complicated for the rest of their lives and ours. And so I'm excited to see some, some new families joining the board. And if you're like, hey, maybe I should join the board, call me. Let's talk. Um, other big news I want to make sure I get a chance to talk about Praxis. Praxis is a, a company that had an earnings call this week. They do a lot of work in SCN2A, which is another monogenic disease. And they announced a partnership with The Flory, which is led by Steve Petru. Now, if you, re if you watch all our Roundtable videos, which you really should do, you will remember in Roundtable 1, Steve Petru gave an exceptional talk about ASOs and genetic therapies for Syngap-1. So we don't know if Steve is working on Syngap-1, but we would hope that he would be after that great talk he gave. And the fact that he is uh, partnered with S uh, Praxis, the fact that they're working on SCN2A, and the fact that the Praxis press release said they are working on up to six other genetic epilepsies gives us a lot of hope. Reminder, Praxis just signed a contract with Citizen to work on SCN2A, which is their lead gene. So maybe they're excited about the fact that there's a Syngap1 Citizen platform, a platform they already know with data they already know that is best in class. Who knows? But very exciting. Best of luck to Praxis and our friends in SCN2A. And here's hoping that Syngap is on their list. I want to talk about two more things. I have 30 seconds. Wahoo Dat Boating is a company in Alabama led by a Syngap parent. They have put the Syngap Research Fund logo on their website. A percentage of profits will go to SRF. They painted their boat purple. Purple is the color for epilepsy. Thank you so much. That's amazing. We are grateful for your support and your endorsement. I know that's your livelihood, and we are touched that you have included Syngap Research Fund in your website and your business. We will continue to earn your trust. Thank you.
Last thing, we joined the American Brain Coalition this week just so we can be a part of the advocacy happening on the Hill. I'm running out of time. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned and follow us to learn about the Singap Research Fund.